Hey everyone, we want to we want to welcome you here today to a special time, a unique time really in the life of the church and of a follower of Christ. And we remember this Good Friday when Christ gave up His life for us. Yeah, this morning I was doing my devotion, and of course, it being Good Friday, it was a Good Friday devotion, and a couple of things really jumped out at me about today was that you know two thousand years ago we celebrate. Christmas as being Emmanuel, God with us, but as we remember and reflect Good Friday and the sacrifice that Jesus made as kind of God for us, not that God's not constantly with us, we know that, but that transition of God with us and God for us really kind of stuck out to me. And also a couple of things just about the day Good Friday is the reason why it is good is because Jesus on this day laid down his life for us. So he did pay that, that sacrifice that you and I could not pay. And uh, in addition to that, that barrier that was broken between humanity and the Father, that we now have direct access, that when Jesus prayed, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that, that solidified that statement that we now get, that we have direct access to the Father. And just a couple of things that jumped out at yeah. me for Good, for good Friday. You know, in, in many traditions, this, uh, this season is called one of bright sadness. And when you think about that, we, we understand the sadness of this day when Christ was crucified and, and just the, the torture and all that he went through. But there's a brightness to that because we don't walk through today without hope. Uh, but today is a day where we stop and we reflect and we think and we remember. And, you know, all through the Old Testament, there was a, a phrase that you would see repeated over and over again. And the people would say, how long, O oh Lord, how long? They were waiting for a Messiah, waiting for one to come to rescue them and to save them and to, and to lead them into something new. And so they cried out, how long, God, do we have to wait? And it had been generations because the first statement of that came right in Genesis where God says, I will send a rescuer. And then they waited and waited and waited until Jesus came. And so today is a day of remembrance of, of him coming. But more than that, as Jeremy said, it, that he has come for us and he gave up his life for us. And so today is a day when we even ask, how long, O oh Lord? How, how long does suffering go on? And we know that Sunday is coming. But today is the day that we remember. Listen to this passage from the book of Isaiah, which reminds us again of all that Christ went through. Isaiah chapter 53, verses 3 through 6 says this. He, is, he was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own, yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. Over the next few moments, uh, literally just some minutes together, we're going to read some scripture of the, those last hours. I've invited some folks from our church family to read. We're going to hear a song. There's going to be a poem that's going to be read. But I hope during this time that you'll just reflect on all that Christ has done. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Father, we thank you so much for the gift that you gave us in your son. And yet, Lord, our hearts are broken when we think of all that he went through, the agony and the pain of the cross, because he loved us enough to put his life on the line. He loved us enough to be the sacrifice. And so today, Lord, we remember. Today, Lord, we, we hold this, this precious moment deep in our hearts, knowing that this isn't the end, but that Easter's coming. So we thank you, Lord, and we praise you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Now it was the governor's uh, custom each year during the Passover celebration to release a prisoner to the crowd, anyone they wanted. This year was a notorious prisoner named Barabbas. As the crowd gathered before Pilate, Pilate's house uh, in the morning asked them, 
Which one do you want me to release to you? Barabbas or Jesus who's called the Messiah? The crowd shouted back, Barabbas. Pilate responded, then what, then what should I do with Jesus who's called the Messiah? They shouted back, crucify him. They shouted back, Jesus. Uh, so they shouted back, crucify him. Why? Pilate demanded. What crime has he committed? But the mob roared even louder. Crucify him. So Pilate released Barabbas to them. He ordered Jesus flogged with the lead tip whip, then turned him over to the Roman soldiers. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. They, they wove thorn branches into a cr uh, crown and put it on his head. And they placed a reed stick on his right hand and a scepter. As a scepter. They knelt before him in mockery and taunted, Hail, King to the Jews! And they spit on him and grabbed the stick and struck him on the head with it. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him again. They led him away to be crucified. a man named Simon from Cyrene, and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. And they went out to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. The soldiers gave Jesus wine mixed with bitter gall, but when he had tasted it, he refused to drink it. After they had nailed him to the cross, the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. Then they sat around and kept guard as he hung there. 
A sign was fastened above Jesus' head, announcing the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. The people passing by shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. Look at you now, they yelled at him. You said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well then, if you are the Son of God, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests, the teachers of religious law, and the elders also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. So he is the king of Israel, is he? Let him come down from the cross right now, and we will believe in him. He trusted God, so let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. Standing near the cross were Jesus' mother, the mother of James and John, and Mary Magdalene. This is called At the Cross. It's written by Andy Stinson. I wait and time ticks past. I gaze, made silent by the sight. I watch as soldiers meticulously move, executing each terrible, tortuous task. I gasp, still life lingers in his fragile, broken form. I flinch as blow by blow, nails bite deep through the flesh to find wood. I stand as he is lifted high, silhouetted against the sky which he has made. I weep as, he, as his cry echoes deep in my hardened, calloused heart. I, we, I wail as he screams, it is complete, finished, final, said, and done. I fall as the sky turns inky black and the sun and moon and stars forget to shine. I kneel as worlds collide and time ticks by, what once bound no longer seems to hold. And I bow, for part of me is gone, kept forever on Calvary's painful peak. And I wait at the foot of the cross to begin my journey home. At about three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Jesus knew that his mission was not finished. And in Phil's scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine was sitting there. So they soaked it with a sponge, put it on a branch, and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split apart. The Roman officers and the other soldiers at the crucifixion were terrified by the earthquake and all that had happened. And they said, this man truly was the son of God. As evening approached, a man who had been a follower of Jesus asked Pilate for permission to take down Jesus' body. When Pilate gave permission, Joseph came and took the body away. Followed the Jewish burial customs, he wrapped he wrapped, he wrapped Jesus' body in a long sheet of linen cloth. Placed it, the place of crucifixion was near the garden where there was a new tomb, never used before. So, and so because it was the day of preparation and of the Jewish Passover, and since the tomb was, not, was close at hand, they laid Jesus there where he rolled then he rolled a great stone across the entrance and left. You know, Good Friday is a significant reminder of God's love for us. 
when we first hear the gospel, when we first hear the good news of Jesus, or we first hear about even the crucifixion, it can be quite troubling when we think of that day. It's difficult to imagine that anyone would undergo such torture so that you and I can be saved. And it isn't until we really understand and experience the power of God's love that it even makes sense to us. And once we do, this tragic story of the crucifixion and all the torture that Jesus endured actually becomes the greatest love story that's ever told. The sacrificial act of Jesus brings into focus God's love for us so much that he would sacrifice his own son for all of humanity so that you cannot, you and I can experience that unrelenting and that undying love for us. And that's why Pastor Dave mentioned earlier that some traditions even call it a bright sadness, a sadness when you think about the crucifixion and the agony that Jesus suffered on that day, but a brightness when we think about the resurrection and forgiveness and life and hope, the brightness of his amazing love for you and I. The scripture teaches us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us so that we can be forgiven and saved. And so when we reflect on the meaning of that good Friday, we should all just rejoice in how much God actually loves us. An author wrote these words, it wasn't nails that held Jesus to the cross, it was his love for us. So as we come to a close, I want to read this passage from the book of Romans. Here's what Paul wrote. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who's especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in his sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice because of our wonderful new relationship with God, because our Lord Jesus has made us friends of God. Go to pray. Will you bow your heads with me? I want to read this beautiful prayer to all of us as we close. Jesus, thank you for dying for our sins so that we don't have to die to our sins. Jesus, we grieve that the torture and the sorrow that you endured on the cross was necessary to save humanity. You didn't want us enslaved to fear or anxiety or sin, so you sacrificed yourself so that love could win. It's love that hung upon the cross and gave up everything to rescue us. It is finished was a cry of victory because you defeated everything that held us in captivity. Because of your sacrifice, we can experience intimacy with you forever. Thank you, Jesus. Show us how to share your love today and every day. Use us to reach the world that you died to redeem. In your name. Amen. Would you, would you sing this with me? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. I want to thank you for taking a little bit of time out of your 
Friday, on this Good Friday, to come and remember and reflect uh, with us. A couple of things uh, before we let you go. One is we have our journey with Jesus out here. And if you've uh, not walked through that ever or you haven't walked through it this year, I would encourage you today or in these next couple days to come out and walk through those last hours of Jesus' life and let that be a deepening of your own longing for him and the longing for uh, for Easter. Also, around here, you'll see some of our invite cards, and we'd love for you to take some of those and invite someone to come and to celebrate the resurrection. Uh, we're having four services here in Turlock, Saturday night at 6 o'clock, Sunday morning at 8, 9.30, and 11. And Patterson? Patterson, our services are 8.30 and 10 a.m. On Sunday? On Sunday. All Sunday right. only, yeah. Hey, thank you for coming and remembering and reflecting with us today. God bless you.